At this time, the area around Stroud and Nailsworth had poets and artists who were at the forefront of these developments. This is Sand Rock Tide by Dom Sylvester Hueda from Prinich Abbey, who referred to himself as D.S.H. Splendid Weeping is an example of the typestracts which he invented and which he became famous for. Sylvester used to spend long evenings typing away in the monastery, much to the annoyance of his fellow monks who eventually decided that his typewriter had to be removed. So ended all the typestracts. Ken Cox originally started as a fairly straightforward painter but who became inspired by Gloop in order to start using words and to question perspective. In this image, using felt tip pen, the girl is seen at a bar in various poses simultaneously. Laurie Clark and Tom Clark enjoyed walking around the area. The walks provided them with material for both the poems of Tom Clark and for the drawings of Laurie Clark. Once Ken Cox had started to use words in his sculptures, he realised that this could form the basis of kinetic poetry. Poetry is often just represented in a book or on a page. Using this particular line on a metal object means it could be placed anywhere in the room so that the room itself becomes part of the medium of the poetry. Dom Sylvester Huedard's The Seas Are Earth's Tears. This is another typewriter poem, rather prescient in that at the time of writing we weren't so engaged with climate change. John Furnival, Following in Nature's Footsteps. It is made up of a maze, a feature which often appears in John's drawing, in which a figure is representing science chasing through the maze, a Botticelli-like figure who is nature,
A drawing from the Wittgenstein series. Why Wittgenstein? Because Wittgenstein's philosophy was inspired when, walking down the pavement, he imagined a cube emerging from the pavement. And so in the Wittgenstein series, John often used the cube as a basic symbol within the drawing. Don Sylvester Huidad's Frog Pond Plop. It is a contraction of a very simple haiku by Basho. Now initially this was an origami figure in which the words were displayed on paper so that you could move the paper around to produce frog, then pond, then plop. John Furnival, Malamé drawing, un coup de day. Stéphane Malamé is regarded as probably one of the most difficult of French poets. Towards the end of his life he produced a poem called un coup de day, a throw of the dice, in which the words were displayed and scattered over the pages of the poem. And this is one of the most important inspirations for both concrete and visual poets. John's drawing on un coup de day is a pen and ink drawing on paper. Wittgenstein drawing number two Ken Cox, Moon Shadow. Marcel Duchamp was fascinated by the way his sculptures and ready-mades produce shadows on his room. And in this case, the words Moon Shadow are displayed as they cast a shadow on a piece of paper. It is said that Cat Stevens was inspired by seeing this image to produce his song, Moon Shadow. Astrid used plants in order to produce dyes for her textile works. And afterwards, she would then burn the plants from her garden or from the fields around Nailsworth in order to produce glazes on tiles in which she had embedded the words for the plants. Another image done in felt tip pen, in which the image of a clock is shown in different views, again to avoid the standard monocular perspective. You might get the impression that much of this work has a very serious content. But that is only one part of the work of Gloop. John Furnival often used to say to me, I preference the laugh over the tear. Astrid Furnival, Common or Garden. Astrid Furnival, for her textile arts, often produced sweaters or large quilts. In this case, it is a sweater which uses the dyes from garden plants in order to then knit the names of those plants on the sweater. <laughs> 